blue snowball maximum, maximum quality power. Oh. maximum power it sounds like yeah well every day every time you say it it sounds like you're uh starting your spaceship the good old days when we were young and young young skippers i mean you are having you're what are, you're 30 now so you are having back pains when you like don't even start go with me jogging don't or something so us youngins can't relate part of the party that's great that's great that's what's a great it I'm sounds ha- like a fish a little bit. You know how like with the skeletons, Larry is like the lead skeleton? What would the name of the Night Witch's lead bat be? Bartholomew. That's an amazing name. I, didn't, <laughs> I, I thought you were going to be like, I don't know, Joe, Bill. Cast Royale, the Clash Royale podcast for casual players. I'm Rob. And I'm Joe. And this week, we discuss the Night Witch, 2v2 drafts, and more. Boom. Boom. Welcome back, broski. That was like an elongated boom. You're like, boom. Well, did you feel it when I said it? Did you feel it in your heart? I always feel it. Yeah, exactly. That's why I said it that way. Okay. (laughs) Great start. Yeah, so welcome to episode 39. Three, nine, boom. I can't believe we're almost at 40. It's kind of crazy, actually. Yeah, I mean, technically this one is 40, but we're going to call it 39 because we started at zero. Well, that's right. Welcome to the show. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So (laughs) how has your week been going in the arena? Eh, I'm not, to be honest with you, this week was a little bit um, anticlimactic for me. Good way to put it, I guess. (laughs) I didn't really have too much going on. So, you know how this the season is like a a little over a month now. So, this week season reset. And as you know from last episode, I somehow made it to master 1 and I was at 5000 trophies, which was my all time. Somehow, 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 give yourself a little credit. I used the mortar mauler and I got to 5000 <laughs> trophies. I don't know how it happened, but I was super excited. And I was so excited that I didn't play in the ladder after that. So for like two and a half weeks, I just sat there and didn't play a game except for in like challenges. Right. But then the season reset and I forgot that it was resetting. And I go into the game the other day and it dropped me all the way back down to 4,300 trophies. So I had like 700 trophies come out of my (laughs) my bank. And I was like, no. Did you cry a little bit? A little bit. I did. I teared up a little bit inside, but it was super cool getting the um, the master one draft chest. Um, I don't really remember what I got in it so it must not have been oh actually i had the option i I think you're gonna be a little upset with me okay i had the option of picking 25 tornadoes or picking 25 lightnings which would you have chose i think i would have chosen 25 lightnings you did oh that's what i did all right see okay all right so so but to be honest with you i was kind of upset because as soon as i did it i was like no, 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 why'd I pick that? Because the Night Witch was coming out, and, well, it did come out at that point, right? And I was like, the, I love the lightning because of how, I, personally, I think it's overpowered, but the tornado is just going to get used so much more now, um, along with, like, the executioners, and we'll get into that a little bit later, but I, I think I regret it a little bit, but either way, I made 25 lightnings, not so bad. I mean, chances are you're going to get another draft challenge at the end of the season. So hopefully you'll get to choose between Tornado and something else. And I will choose Tornado. Exactly. Lognado! Unless somehow they give me the option of picking 25 Lognados or 25 Logs. Imagine that. Mm, I think in a perfect world, that would be the option. Well, I would, I would be there. I would, yeah. <laughs> and, and I would choose it. You would pick that. What? Okay. What hypothetical? What would you pick if it was the choice between twenty five tornadoes and a thousand zaps? That's tough, man. Yeah, twenty five tornadoes and a thousand zaps. Yeah, knowing that the Night Witch is coming out, I think I would have to. That's a good question, right? So I think I would still choose the tornado because mm-hmm. yeah, you get a lot more zaps, but the zap is as effective as killing the bats are anyway, and. No matter what level the zap is, it's pretty much going to kill the bats regardless. So I think I'd try and level up the NATO. 
Lognado! Lognado! Hmm. So yeah, that was pretty much my week in the arena. It was kind of unfortunate that 700 trophies came out of the bank, but I'm like trying to slowly do the climb again. But I got to be honest with you, man. I, I do not like playing when the season resets. It is, I, I like playing in challenges, but I do not like playing in the ladder. It is super disheartening when you play the ladder right after reset. See, that's funny because I used to feel like that um, until I until I learned how to play. And then, and then I realized that there are just so many people that are not good that got reset to where I'm at that I have a better shot of making it up the ladder until I hit my ceiling. And then I'm like, oh, I can't go any higher. So basically, now that now that I got reset, now I know why I'm not doing so well, because I just wasn't good. <laughs> and <laughs> I fall into that bucket of players that you were just talking about. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the nice thing is that you get to open a draft chest when the season is done. So I was happy when I went into the game because I got really upset that my trophy count got reset. Not nearly as upset as you were because you went from 5,000 to 4,000. I went from like 4,300 to 4,000. So it wasn't that serious. Um, but when you realize that you get reset and you're like, no man, that kind of stinks. And then they're like, but wait, there's more. Here's a draft chest. Yeah, it's kind of nice. It's like it's like the the silver lining to the whole thing. But I still think I, I, I personally I just I still feel like I, I like challenges better when the season resets. It's just there's no point in playing when you're playing against level twelve people with level thirteen cards throughout their deck, and you're overcoming this severe level disadvantage for a pool of players that in reality you wouldn't play against because they're normally seven hundred trophies higher than you. Well, that's true. You're, de- you're definitely playing against people that you should not be playing against, but both directions, right? Like I just said, I play a lot of people that are worse that just happen to beat random people to get higher than me. It's a very fair point. So double-edged sword, I would say. So my week in the arena was anticlimactic in terms of trophy count. Okay. But in terms of cards, I had a grand old time. Okay. So let me hear it. Okay. So first and foremost, I got really annoyed that I didn't own the Ice Wizard. And now that the game keeps introducing more and more legendaries, it's turning into a thing where I don't see him in the shop as often, if at all, ever. Right. So the next or the last time that I saw him in the shop, I bought him. Done. I now own the Ice Wizard. And then I did the exact same thing with the Inferno Dragon because I was tired of not owning that one as well. And you may say, Rob, how did you have this much gold for all of these legendaries? I don't know, Joe. I just, I just saved my gold. I went into saver mode and just saved my gold. I didn't buy it, just so you know. I didn't buy gold. Okay, do you need me in this conversation, or are you no, still going? No, 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 I got it. Don't <laughs> worry. No, I got it. Are you ready? So then, if, that, if those two legendaries weren't enough, because you know people are going to be like, oh, well, you didn't earn it, right? So I also received the bandit, another bandit from my clan chest from last week. So that was fantastic. And then speaking of draft chests, when I opened my draft chest at the end of the season, I got another log over the choice of another princess. So I obviously chose the log. Dude. So I got four legendaries in one week. That's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. So wait, do you have every single legendary in the game now? Everything but the Night Witch. That's a beautiful thing. It really does feel good knowing that I am only missing one card that's available, two cards total that are left. So I am still missing the Inferno Dragon, and I'm not, uh, well, I guess the Inferno Dragon's the only legendary I don't have, and I have every other card, but obviously the bats are going to be coming out, I guess, relatively soon. They haven't put a, a date on it, but, um, but dude, that's crazy. You four legendaries in <coughs> one week? I don't think I've gotten four legendaries in the last two months. Yeah. No, maybe, maybe, mm, maybe not. Maybe not. Your yep. face, your face tells me maybe not. <laughs> but, but that's awesome, uh, man. Yeah, it was, uh, I don't really have anything else to say about it other than the fact that I was like super stoked every time I got one. And I, I get this, I get this like nervous feeling and like my heart goes in my chest when I see that diamond looking card come out of the, out of the chest. And I'm just like, yes, I got one. Is it the same reaction that we gave on the cast when we opened one on the show? I mean, it's close. It's definitely not as much fun because I don't have someone else experiencing it with me. And all I have is to take a screenshot and I just get to text it to people and be like, hey, guys, guess what I got? And they're like, cool, man. Great job. 
Thumbs up, bro. <laughs> yeah, like, it's not nearly <laughs> as fun. So here's my question. Hmm. Did you make a deck with the Ice Wizard and the Inferno Dragon in it? I mean, you're only two cards you didn't have before, so did you make That's a deck true. with them? That's true. That's true. No. And the reason why is because it's not about using the card. It's about my OCD kicking in and the younger version of Rob and when he used to collect Pokemon cards, he just needed he just needed the other cards. He needed so you them. Just, you just didn't want to see the gray card at the t- bottom I'm of your screen. I'm tired of it. Yeah. You wanted to scroll down less. Yes, that's exactly it. I'm tired of not having a complete collection. For a game that only has 70-something cards, I should have them all. Especially after, what is that, a year and... How long have you been playing? A year and f- four months year. we've been playing? No, yeah, we'll go, we'll go with a year. We'll call it a year. I, I mm-hmm. think it's a little bit more, but a year sounds fine. A year is nice and even. It is a round number. Is it even? Well, in theory, one year is an odd number, but it also sounds like a rounded out even number. So it's an right. it's an awkward number. It's the number one. It's just a one year is just a good number. <laughs> it's, it's a it's a good number. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I guess that's really it for our weeks in the arena. Did you have anything else you wanted to add on to that uh, cake right there? Nope. Nothing for me. All right. So uh, I have a question. We've had a couple of weeks with the fairly new heal spell. What's your impression of this card now that it's actually released into the wild and we've gotten to use it um, and see it with our opponent's decks? How do you feel? You know, man, I'm not really sure. Like, I, I feel like the heal spell is one of those cards, right, where it's, a, it's like a Maverick's Ace, right? It's like you, it's up your sleeve and you try not to use it until the end of the game or until um, you can quote-unquote surprise your opponent. In a lot of ways, it's a lot like the Rocket, um, only... a significantly less immediate impact right like with a rocket if someone drops a pump you're obviously going to throw it out right away but otherwise if if there are no cards like that there's a good chance that you're not going to play the rocket until the end of the game um and the main difference between the two is that one is a damage spell the the most damage spell in the game while the other is a heal spell and it's the only thing in the game that heals um but in a lot of ways, the surprise factor is utilized the same way within a deck. And I, I, I think, I think this spell confuses me <laughs> a lot. <laughs> Why? I just, I don't know. I can't, I can't put a finger on the appropriate way to use it. And hmm. to be honest with you, like I watch these competitive esports players mm-hmm. play and you know, I'm watching CCGS and I'm watching the live matches in the top 32 bracket. And a lot of people are running like the Three Musketeer, Battle Ram, Goblin Gang, Heal Deck. Mm-hmm. And I just can't put a finger on when they use it and when they don't use it. And when are they getting the most value versus when are they not getting the most value? Right. And I try and mimic how they use it and I can't do it. And I don't know if it's just because it's such a different type of card usage um within a deck than any other card or if it's just because i don't personally understand the appropriate way to use it um i don't know maybe it's just me i just can't figure it out and to be honest with you like i go on youtube and i try and figure out like where i can find information on (laughs) on this card and i come up with nothing well, I think that I think that it throws me off a little bit too. So I'm I'm kind of with you there. Um, I think the thing that, first of all, I would agree with you that this card is something that you want to keep like in your pocket until you absolutely need to use it. Because once your opponent knows that you're using it, they have a better understanding of how your deck is kind of archetyped, and I think they'll have an easier time figuring out how to counter you or at least do things that can kind of make that heal spell not worth it, right? So I think the thing for me that throws me off is that it's only three seconds, and it happens fairly quickly. It's one of the only spells that isn't a pretty lengthy spell. Like, th- th- think about the, um, at, least, at least the spells that do effects over time, right? Like, think about how long a poison lasts, or think about how long, I mean, even a graveyard, that's, that's insane how long that one lasts. Um, the freeze lasts long, the, um, and what's the, what's the last one? The tornado, but that one, that one's three, three seconds as well. So it's, that one's comparable per se. Yeah, that's true. 
Um, but the difference between the heal spell and the tornado is that there's a very good chance that the tornado is not being held. In fact, there's a good chance that you're using the tornado multiple times, as many times as you can per game on offense or defense. Whereas I find that the heal spell can be used offensively and defensively, but you're only using it on your troops, and most of the time you're using it when your troops are on the opposing side of the map. That's true. I think of the tornado as like you're like the the puppet master, like pulling the strings throughout the entire show. You know, it's like it's one of those spells that you have to kind of constantly keep using because it helps you kind of mold the way that the game is going to go. You know, totally agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm still I'm still on the fence about about the heal spell. I'm not really sure I like it too much, but only because I don't really see too much of an impact for it. Like the deck that you mentioned, it kind of makes sense that it would be in a deck like that because you'd want to keep a card that costs nine elixir alive a little bit longer than normal, especially since there's three musketeers involved. Also, the battle ram the benefit of having the heal spell with that card is that if you give it that little extra boost of health, it will make it to the tower. That is a very fair point. So I guess my question to you is, what are the best cards to use the heal spell with, right? Like the three musketeers are good. The regular musketeer is good. Mm -hmm. I personally didn't think about the battle ramp, but that's obviously a fantastic choice. Right. I mean, what else is good? I would think that you would want to use that spell on cards that you absolutely need to get to the tower so like i would use it on something like a golem so now let me ask you this the golem has what four thousand health already so i thought that the best use for the now this is where i could be wrong and this is where maybe i'm using the card wrong i thought the best use was to use it on the musketeers or on the executioners the things behind the big tanks because the ultimate purpose of a tank is to die it's to soak up damage and to die but you need to have your win conditions stay alive. Otherwise, you can't win the game. Right, and that's the thing that I keep thinking about. So I think for me, it's like, the, the perfect example, honestly, and I hate to keep going back to it, is the Battle Ram. Like, that's the card that you would use it with the heal spell. But another one that you could use it with would be, that kind of naturally seems to fit, would be the Giant Skeleton. You'd want to get that card to the tower, so if it's gonna if it's gonna die before it gets to the tower, you'd want to drop that heal spell so it can get a little bit further, a little bit closer to get that bomb next to the to the tower. No? Yeah, no. I guess, I guess you're right. I just I I don't. I mean, maybe it's just me, but I don't even see people play the 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 giant skeleton anymore. Like I I only to be honest with you, I think the only time I even see the giant skeleton played anymore is in like draft challenges because that card is so annoying to deal with in draft challenges if you don't have cards that can properly kill it but if you have a heal spell and you have a giant skeleton in the draft challenge then obviously that's a slam dunk but i don't think in a normal ladder match a viable combination of cards is giant skeleton and heal spell personally i don't but i don't know again i'm not good at this card so i just don't know yeah i mean i don't know either that's what it's why i'm i'm leaving it up to the listeners i don't really know because i don't really play it too often but i would think that it would be things that you want to be able to get them to the tower that's my opinion yep i totally agree i mean you need to use them with win conditions otherwise it's probably a useless card to have Mm -hmm. would you ever really want to use it with a lava hound you could, but the ultimate purpose of a Lava Hound is not to keep the Lava Hound alive as much as it is to, to let it die and get the pups alive. Exactly. So maybe you use it with the pups and not the actual hound. Right, but the problem with the pups is that they can die to a single shot arrow or a single shot, you know, execution or mm. depending on the, I guess, depending on how far away they are. Have you ever thought about the fact that, like, the executioner deals significantly much faster damage to things that are further away from it in a shorter period of time? Because once it hits something that's farther away, the axe comes back quicker. Immediately. Like it, it hits them on the way back quicker. So it's like a double whammy right at the same time. Right. So let's put, let's put this into perspective. Are you ready? Um, I am putting my visionary hat on right now. If an executioner, you're, you're playing a game and you're technically on the bottom half of the map, right? Mm-hmm. Executioner is coming down the right-hand side of the map and it's about to cross the river. In your hand, you have an ice spirit, a lonely little ice spirit. Mm Mm-hmm. Now, you have two options. Those two options are play the ice spirit in the middle of the arena where it can, quote-unquote, draw the executioner towards it. Or your second option is to wait until it crosses the river and play the ice spirit directly on top of the executioner. 
Which do you choose and why? So I would tell you that I would choose the wrong answer because it sounds correct, but I think the correct answer is to drop it right on top of him. That is the correct answer, because if you play it in the middle of the arena, the executioner is going to use his range, hit the ice spirit once on the way out, and it's going to hit it on the way back before the ice spirit has a chance to do anything. It's going to kill it. However, if you flip it the other way and you drop the ice spirit right on the executioner as soon as it crosses the bridge, you can steer the first executioner axe away from your tower, and the, the length of time it takes for the second axe to come back, like the second hit to happen. Right, the Ice Spirit could already hit the Executioner. Ice Spirit already jumped in, dealt damage to the Executioner, and froze it for whatever the 1.5 seconds or whatever the duration is. So, mm. I mean, you get more damage and you take less damage on your tower. So, I don't know how we started talking about the Executioner and, <laughs> and, or, and or an Ice Spirit combination, but it's just a little fun fact. It's okay, I like it. it um, this this how we talk Clash. We're just talking casual right now. That's what we do, baby. Boom. This is what happens when the game doesn't give us anything but a heal spell and a Night Witch. That's, I mean, well, the Night Witch is a big thing to talk about. Wait till we get there, but we've got lots to talk about there. That's, that's true. Uh, you want to talk about that now, actually, since we're kind of there already? Let's do it. So the Night Witch came out, and before it came out, we had a challenge. And of course, I called it, right? As soon as the episode from two weeks ago finished, a challenge comes out, people. A challenge comes out that Joe gets 12 wins and gets the Night Witch. And I don't get it. I don't get boom, boom for you, but not for me. I didn't get it. I got to tell you, when this when this challenge happened, so the Night Witch was released, right? But it was released on a call it a Monday. But over the weekend, they allowed you to get it early if you played a, a draft challenge with the Night Witch in it and you won 12 games. So I got to be honest with you, like normally I'm not the best at draft challenges and they're, mm-hmm. they frustrate, they frustrate me till no end. Um, sometimes I do really well. Sometimes I do very poor. Um, but all it takes is one good run with it because to be honest, you only, you only need one 12 win set to get the card. It's funny though that you say this because it always seems like the one time, the time that you need to pull it together is when there's a legendary on the on the line. Oh, that's true, right? Because the I got the Electro Wizard when it, when it came mm-hmm. out. Because I'm terrible at these draft challenges normally. <laughs> Don't worry, people. I'll just be sitting over here really bitter. If if you'd like, we can do a fr- couple of friendly battles and you can play against it. Yeah, that's exactly what I want to do. Play <laughs> against one of the most overpowered cards in the game. It really is. Can, can I just ask you a question? When you were doing the draft challenges, did you have, a, did you have any sort of um, like a strategy in terms of taking the Night Witch versus giving it to your opponent? I usually always took it. Yeah, I think, I think that was on my side too. I, I, I did not want to face this card. Mm-hmm. Um, I think in other challenges, like the Bandit draft challenge, I would, I would give my opponent that card because I think one, that wasn't overly overpowered. And two, I didn't really think people knew how to use it properly. Mm-hmm. Um, so I could probably take advantage of that. But the There's Night definitely Witch, a higher skill cap with the Bandit than there is with the Night Witch. Oh, I totally agree. But the Night Witch is just super overpowered with a very low skill cap. So anybody can pretty much pick her up, plop her down, and just enjoy. So I didn't have the same, um, the, the same interest to give that card away. In mm-hmm. fact, if I saw it, it was almost an immediate pick. Um, regardless of what other cards I had in my, in my hand. And to be honest with you, there, there are certain times where with the draft challenge, like if I get a lightning, I will purposely give my opponent like a wizard, a musketeer, an electro wizard, things that'll get one shot by the lightning. But I did not give my opponent the night witch, even if I had a lightning in my hand, because it is just way too good to give up. Yeah, it's funny because I think I picked my cards pretty much the same way that you did, uh, but clearly I didn't know what I was doing or I was just facing some really serious people. That's the thing, right? Like you can play anybody in these draft challenges and even if you pick well, if you don't know how to play the specific cards, it's going to be hard to win. Um, and even if you pick poorly, if you know how to play the cards, you might be able to do something with them that, that allows you to win. So I, draft challenge for me is I think they do it so that less people get the card, to be honest with you. Like, 
I think if you can build the deck, you're going to find more people get it because people are better at deck building with cards that they know. Right. The way that I, here's, I'll just summarize this point in one, one quick thing with, with normal challenges, you're going to find more people having either one, two or three wins or 10, 11 and 12 wins. But in the draft challenges, you're going to find people having more of the middle ground wins. You're going to find people having more five, six, seven, eight wins as opposed to, you know, doing so terrible or doing so well that they get the card. Generally speaking, there's just more volatility. Yeah, that that's actually a really good point. Um, I'd like to tangentially ask you a question. So if you do you think that a person who is inherently good with the regular witch is inherently good with the night witch or vice versa? That's a very good question. Thank you. So I would say I would say no, because if you're good with the regular witch, it's because you're probably good at playing her behind a tank, right? Mm-hmm. But you're also probably good at placing her in such a way that her AOE damage does wonders while her little skeletons distract. Most things in this game are ground troops. So if you're going to distract something, you're typically not going to distract air. You're going to distract ground. Um, so I find that the little skeletons that she produces not only distract, but then obviously they do damage and then she does AOE. I think with the Night Witch, it's just different, right? Like, you're not distracting anything. And even if you have bats, the bats that she generates aren't truly distracting much. Um, you know, they might distract a musketeer from hitting her or an archer from it hitting her for one or two hits. But ultimately, the purpose of playing her is so that she gets into the thick and thin of things and so she deals damage. Um, and if you ever drop her in the back, then her purpose is to just generate bats until it annoys your opponent till no end and they don't have anything to answer the bats. Yeah, well, that's that's true. And dude, she hits so hard. She like, hits like a truck. She really is like just a walking, a walking hammer. I just don't understand how let's 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 call out the elephant or the gorilla in the room, whatever, whatever that famous saying is this car, this card is too much it's too much so it's obviously too much right like it's definitely an overpowered card yes but i do think that a part of why it's overpowered is because people don't know how to appropriately deal with it don't get me wrong it hits like a truck but it's the first troop in the game that a spawns flying units and b not only spawns units but also further spawns them when dies Mm-hmm. And oh, by the way, is a melee troop that has the same range of hit as a prince, which is 1.5 tiles. It's not even like she has to be right next to something to attack it right. because she has so much distance to keep in between her. So technically speaking, if she's facing any other melee troop, she's getting the first hit on it unless she's facing a prince. I think I just don't know if enough playtesting went into this card because I don't understand how I don't understand how when you look at the cards that are available now, right? Like a perfect example is I played against this card and the deck that I lost, I lost my first tower within 20 seconds of the game starting. Do you know why? Because this person thought it was a really good idea, which clearly it was because they beat me. Um, destroyed me actually. It was Night Witch. I don't remember what the other cards were, but Night Witch, Mirror, Clone, Rage Spell. That just sounds painful. I'm just gonna let that let that marinate for just a second. Just think about that. How many things are attacking a tower at once? And if I already used my arrows, there's nothing I can do. Well, that's true, but I mean. The other way to think about it is if you would have just had an executioner, they're all dead and the game is over. You win. That's true. That's true. But for a card that is clearly very prevalent right now, I, I, I don't, I feel like you have to play with an executioner in order to be in the ladder right now. And I don't, I don't know. I just, I feel like the night witch needs to be toned down so that she's not used all over the place. Yeah, no, you're right. And it's not even just in the ladder, but it's also in challenges and tournaments, right? Like at level Hmm. right now, she's a legendary. So if you think about it, it's not easy for people to get her maxed out. So when you're playing on the ladder, 
you're typically going to be at a disadvantage with her because mm -hmm. she is not as high of a level as maybe your other cards are in your decks. Right. But in tournament standards, she's even more overpowered because she's equal level with everything and nobody knows how to deal with her properly. Um, and oh, by the way, she's just obviously a very strong card. Um, and you know, we'll get to this when we get to the meta check, but I don't know if there's any other card that has impacted the game the same way that this card has ever. Yeah, well, that's a really good point. And uh, I don't want to drill this too hard because I think that we, uh, we talked about this card enough. Um, let's talk a little bit about the new game modes that are supposedly coming out in the next game update. Let's do it. So we got some cool YouTube videos uh, provided by Sip and Bangs from uh, Supercell, and they pretty much showed off two new game modes that are going to be coming in the next game update. So they are both 2v2 themed, and one will be a draft battle, and the other will be a friendly battle. So both will be 2v2, um, and it's something that you can do in your clan. So another, another way or two other ways that you can play with your clan mates, which is pretty cool if I have to say so myself. I would totally agree with that, right? Because, I mean, the, when you're dealing with, when, when you're dealing with a one-on-one -on -one friendly battle situation, mm -hmm. there's only so many fun things you can do. But when you double that up, think about all the fun things you can do then. Like, how many times have you seen people do fun games in a friendly battle where they just, like, mass troops or mass elixir, yeah. elixir pumps <laughs> and do, like, giants versus, um, like, princesses and just see how many princesses you can match? Yeah, right? that's true. Or just all um, buildings. Right. And so I feel like this is going to allow for more. One, you can practice for your clan battles, right? Mm -hmm. When the clan battle chests come, you can practice because now you have a venue to do that. Right. And two... There's just so much more fun you can have because you're not just two people in the game. You're now four people in the clan in the game. So there's more interaction going on. There's more, there's more, you know, camaraderie. There's, there's just more community feel mm -hmm. as opposed to just 1v1, 1v1, 1v1. And with this game, it seems to be going in a direction where it's not just 1v1. It's not just building your deck. It's more than that. It's 2v2s. It's draft mode. It's challenges it's it's these different styles that allow it to stay fresh yeah that's a that's a really good point and uh i'm really excited to be playing these things because i think i think what you were just talking about about you know having a good place to practice 2v2 you don't really have that because the only time you have to practice is the two and a half days on the weekend every other week so by the time you're done you have to wait a whole extra week or two weeks really to be able to play the 2v2 again that's right. So which one are you more excited for? I am more excited for the friendlies. I do like the draft, but I think people will get very frustrated with the draft. I mean, unless you can effectively build a deck, I mean, what it's going to turn into is it's going to be a hodgepodge of units <laughs> and spells that are in buildings. That that's are true, just, but typically a hodgepodge of everything is good. That's not, that's not a bad point, Rob. <laughs> but to be honest, like, I don't know how I feel about it right off the bat. Like, I think it can be very, very fun. And to be honest with you, it might even be more fun than what the clan battles currently are because those are so regimented to me right now. They're, it, it, it's not fun because you're just trying to win. Like maybe in the draft mode, I mean, obviously you'll still be trying to win, but everybody will know that the draft version is obviously going to innately be more volatile and innately going to be more lucky. No, that makes sense. Um... But as you can tell, we are clearly very excited for this, and it's just going to give us more ways to interact with our clans, which is always one of our top priorities. Boom. But that mm -hmm. does lead us into just clan battles in general. Can I ask you a question? You can. Do you remember when 2v2s first came out, that the clan battles first came out, do you remember what it took to, to win the clan chess? Do you remember? I don't, but I do remember that it was crowns and not wins. It was crowns, exactly. Now, the problem with that is that you have so many people playing because it was so hype, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody was in the game. You have 50 people in your clan. I bet you 30 of them were on. Mm -hmm. And it was just nonstop clan battles. And you didn't have to win the game. You could just get a couple of crowns and you're just amping up your, your clan chest. Right. And within like four hours, you'd have it completed already. And it happened so fast that people weren't able to obtain the, the reward. Because you have to participate <laughs> in order right. to get the reward. So right. if 15 people in the clan got all the crowns, then obviously it didn't work out so well for those other people. Then they switched it. They said, you know what, the crowns, they were, 
not the best option. So the instead, crowns are too easy to get. That's that's probably the issue. Too easy to get. So now instead, let's do it like this. Let's not make it based on crowns and let's make it based on wins. And in doing so, they changed it. In order to get a level 10 chest, you would have 110 wins, which seemed like a pretty good number, right? Mm hmm. But still very attainable if you can win 110 games as a clan. Right. And people were still finishing it early. People were definitely finishing it early. And depending on your, how active your clan was, probably made it a little bit easier for you. Right. But don't forget, it's not about how active you are. It's about how many times you win. You can play 500,000 games. And if you only win one of them, well, it doesn't matter how active you were during that time span. But most of the time, you're pretty much going to go 50-50 or so in those games. So mm -hmm. chances are, if you're playing enough games, you'll win. So with that, they switched it to 275 wins in order to get a level 10 tier chest. 275, that's more than double the 110 clan wins to get it last time. That is a grind. It's ridiculous, actually. Uh, every time that I sit down to try and do it, I like to be able to go in and play a couple of games and then pop back out of the game and then come back in a, in a couple hours and then play a couple games. And it throws me off so much that... A, I'm still not really used to the fact that we need to get wins. And B, I feel like recently it's been like every Sunday night, the clan is fighting and scrambling to make it to a level 10 chest. And to be honest, I don't even think the last time the, you know, the last clan chest, we didn't even hit 10. We made it to nine because it was just, too, it was too difficult. You know, I, I, I hear you completely. And it's just like, it, it takes the fun out of it, right? And I think the whole point of Supercell doing what they did by increasing it to 275 wins, but not increasing the reward that people get for getting those wins, um, was that they wanted the clan battles to be focused more on fun. But mm -hmm. innately, it has the opposite effect, right? Like if you sit here and you know you have to get 275 wins and you're in a clan where maybe you're just the clan just isn't as good, right? Like you can play as many games as you want, but you're ultimately you're not going to win as many games as you need to get the 10 level chest. Right. And that isn't fun anymore. That's frustrating. And it kind of deters people from wanting to play. Like if I know that the max level I'm going to get for a clan chest is level seven, then I'd rather focus on the challenges or the ladder after that, as opposed to frustratingly lose all the time to go nowhere in the clan battles. Right. No, I agree. Um, and honestly, I just I don't understand why the logic is wins. I really I just I still don't get that because you can inherently just not be that good at this game. And it is. Way, yes, it is way easier to get a crown than it is to get a win. But really, all they needed to do was just raise the amount of crowns you needed. I totally agree. I don't know why they didn't just like. If it took four hours or half a day to get through the first round of uh, a clan chest with the amount of crowns that was required, why didn't they just quadruple the amount of crowns you needed or just triple the amount of crowns you needed? Totally agree. I mean, that seems like the, the right answer, right? Because wins don't make sense, especially if you're trying to, quote unquote, make it about fun. So personally, crowns are the right option. Make it more or reduce the rewards. It has to be attainable without feeling like a grind, especially if the whole purpose of it is to be fun. People should feel like they're accomplishing something and not falling short of something. Well, yeah, I mean, it, sh they, it should be fun and people should feel like that it's, it's, a, it's a community building exercise. That's what it is. It's so we can play with our clan. And if people are just frustrated that only three people are online because half of the clan is frustrated that they're not going to make it to a level 10 chest, what is the point? Preaching to the choir here, man. I, I know. And uh, I, re I really, really hope that that changes because, I mean, it's one thing to have it on the weekend when everybody is busy and everybody is doing things. And, you know, as like the, the, the competitive players are saying that there are major tournaments happening on the weekend. I don't even know how they're able to get their chest. They don't. They leave the clans and they do what they have to do and they're not taking part in it. Exactly. Which is sad. It is sad. But that's what. Happen. I mean, if you're a competitive player, you have to kind of sacrifice. Unfortunately, you have to sacrifice the fact that you're playing in a, a competition, which is you know requiring you to leave your clan, which makes you innately unable or ineligible to get the clan chest. So 
it's unfortunate. It shouldn't be like that. I think they should have some sort of a workaround where you have like a quote unquote home clan, like a dedicated home clan. And Mm -hmm. if you're in that clan, you can get it. Like if you leave the clan and come back into that home clan, you can still get the clan chest. Right. Or like within a time frame. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Or just spread the event across longer days. So there's so many different things that they could do, but, uh, we, we can't list them all. That was just a handful, and we think that it needs to change. I agree. Mm-hmm. So we have a meta check. Meta check. Check, 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 check. And this is, again, brought to you by Sir Devin, Lord Christmas. So what does he got for us today, Joe? Yes, so we do have an awesome meta check, and this one's a little bit different, man. I'm going to start off with something crazy are you ready i'm ready the spear goblins have made an appearance in the top 25 decks of the current meta in the ladder making them no longer one of the worst cards in the game what really left on that list is the barbarian hut goblin hut tesla tower inferno dragon and your beloved giant skeleton interesting so the Spear Goblins, for whatever reason, are making some sort of a comeback. I'm not sure if it was a, a blip in the radar, but we'll keep an eye on it and see what happens. But next up is obviously going to be the Night Witch. <laughs> Dude, the Night Witch came into this game and literally just blew up the meta. In one day, this card was released, introduced to CCGS, and was implemented not only into the game, but into every single person's deck that had her. Mm-hmm. It was almost immediately a must-have in your decks. And I'm assuming because we see this card all the time that we're seeing other cards that we don't normally see to counter this card. That is the exact thing that we see. Two things are happening because this card has been released. One, cards that counter her well are being included in people's decks because you can't really afford not to have them. And those two cards are the Executioner and the Tornado. The combination of them easily kill the night witch and oh by the way they're just two very good cards in tandem with one another Mm -hmm. so it just makes sense so over the course of the past week and a half you've seen a significant uptick in those decks the downside to that is that decks like lava loon all kind of start to trickle away because if the night witch comes out and you're seeing more and more decks with execution or tornado Mm -hmm. what counters lava hound loon Execution or Tornado. So it just becomes this domino effect of this card got released, it's now being countered by this, and because everybody has it in their deck, nobody's playing a Lava Loon anymore. I mean, I'm sure people are playing it, but it's just not as viable anymore because it's just so easily countered by the Execution or NATO. And oh, by the way, man, the Night Witch itself counters that deck anyway because it is super annoying for someone to have to deal with. Multiple bats that come out every couple of seconds and then even if you kill her you still have to kill the other four bats that she just spawned it's like a lava hound nightmare (laughs) and it's even worse for the for the loon because that thing hates little small air units in front of it for example minions or for example bats or for example the lava pups because it has to it has to kind of juke and swerve around them because things Mm -hmm. that are in the air take up space so it still has to maneuver its way around them and it makes it less effective with the loon, it wants to go straight to the tower. But if things are in its way, it's not going to get there. Yeah, that's that's actually, that's amazing. I've never seen a card. I've never seen a card change the meta so quickly like that. It's actually unbelievable. And I, I will even go as far to say this. Devin mentions that the log is slowly being dethroned for the best and most used card in the game. Now, we've always said that it was easy for the log to be the best card in the game because it was the best spell, especially when it was cycled, Mm -hmm. and it had the most use, like most useful purposes, right? But now with the Night Witch coming out, people are switching that log for a zap and or an arrows because those effectively kill the bats and you need to be able to deal with her bats, otherwise you're going to die. So very quickly, not only did the metagame change itself, But the best, most used card in the game very quickly (laughs) is now being downgraded to an okay card 
and not that useful. It's it's just ama- it's mind blowing to see how quickly it happened. That's crazy, actually, because we we talk about the log like every time we do this meta check, and it is always the number one card, or at the very least, the number one spell. That's right. But we did this meta check the first time after the Night Witch has been released, and you are already seeing the immediate impact it is having on the meta. It is insane. That is pretty crazy. Um, Anything on that list that was surprising other than the log? So this one is a little bit surprising to me. The lightning is now up in usage and it is being used 27% of the time. Now that makes sense, I guess, because the lightning was just way too good to begin with. But now with everyone using the Night Witch, it's even better because the lightning kills the Night Witch, right? But this mm-hmm. one surprised me because I didn't think that people would turn to the the lightning to kill the Night Witch. Because even if you kill her, you still have to deal with her annoying bats. Right. I think, and I could be wrong, but I think that this lightning uptick is an immediate knee-jerk reaction. But people will quickly start to realize that it's not the right answer. It's good and very effective versus her, but it is not the right answer in the long in the long run. Um, there are more effective ways to deal with her, and I think that, sure, you're going to see this uptick in the lightning for now, but ultimately, it's going to turn into the executioner and the tornado being the right, more used responses to her. Yeah, I, I'd agree with you, and I think that the elixir trade is better with that combination than using a lightning. Totally agree, especially if you can get multiple units in it. I mean, the lightning has its its pluses, don't get me wrong. But the lightning does not effectively deal with the Night Witch's bats. Um, And so the problem with those bats, they might seem like little non-issues until those non-issues are eating your tower away behind some sort of a tank. And they just melt it away. Exactly. And the longer she stays alive, the more she creates. And then when she actually does die, there are more. Just more. It's just bats on bats on bats on bats. It's a little bit overwhelming, but I, like I kind of like it's like it's like beautiful, but semi annoying at the same time. Like yes. I just don't know how to deal with it sometimes. It's beautiful and annoying. That's the best way to say it. <laughs> so I've got nothing else. I mean, there were a bunch of other changes. We will attach the meta check into the the show notes. But this was an awesome meta check. So Devin, thank you so much for taking the time to put it together. Boom, boom. That was a fantastic meta check, and I'm very excited. Uh, that we're finally getting something that is different than all the other meta checks. So, no, I, I, I agree. I mean, like I said, I, I love the Night Witch, and I, I love the fact that she's shaking up the meta. It's like shake and bake, baby. But I mean, there's a certain, <laughs> there's also a certain extent of it where it's a little too much. And I think, I think that people will see how to counter her effectively. She will be toned down through some sort of a balance, is my guess. But. Even if she isn't, people just innately being able to understand how to play against her will f- make her feel a little bit less powerful. But do not get me wrong. She is super, <laughs> super powerful. Yes, she is. Um, so, yeah, uh, l- we also have some chests to open. Yeah, we do. So I have a crown, a clan and a big dog. And I've got a crown, no clan, and a big dog. All right, so I guess I, but naturally I'd have to go first. Naturally, because the little brother never leads. Boom. Right, so should I do the clan first, since you don't have one? Let's do it. All right, so clan chest, keeping in mind that this is not, for the first time, a level 10 clan chest. Sad face. Mm-hmm. So, but level 9, we'll see what happens. You ready? Ready. Here we go. 1,404 gold, which is very different than 1,600. 1,620, baby. You're missing Mm -hmm. out. Mm Mm-hmm. Two barbarian huts. Okay. It's a little lackluster. Yep. 29 zaps. Now that's... Now that is good. Yeah. Not as good as this, though. 40 skeletons. Regular skeletons? Yeah, I'm 50 away from level 12. Boom. Boom. There's a lot of little Aries running around, man. Uh Uh-huh. 43 mortars. Mortar mauler. 95 goblins. Okay. Which puts me at level 12. Nice. 
I don't know. I don't know why I'm talking about all these level twelves. Like I have enough gold to upgrade all of these yeah. skills. <laughs> uh, and then twenty two heal spells. Interesting, as seeing as we were just talking about the heal spell. I was just gonna say someone's ears are ringing. And three baby dragons. Ooh, that's a good one. Pretty good chest. I'm 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 impressed. That is a really good chest. All right, so I'm up. So I've got a. I have no clan chest, but I do have a crown chest. All right, let's do it. You ready? Ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, here we go. <laughs> crown chest, 606 gold. All right. Three gems. Nice. Four bombers. Okay. Random. Eh, yeah, a <laughs> little bit random. Eight skeletons. So I've got, I've got not, not so many Larry's running around. My skeleton party is hanging out over at your house right now. Just a portion of them. I've got eight three musketeers okay. and 62 goblin gang. Nice, considering how much that has been rising up in the ranks recently. That's a very good point. Not a great chest, but not one that I will complain about, so let's rock on. Alright, so my crown chest. You ready? Ready. Here we go. 605 gold. Ooh, that was one less than me, dude. That means your mm-hmm. that means your chest is gonna be better than mine. Watch, mm-hmm. here comes the legendary. I'm calling it. You're gonna get a Sparky. I'm calling it's, it. First of all, that's not a good thing. And second of all, everything seems to be one less than yours, right? So now I got two gems. Okay. So it's it's, it's already not doing well, Joe. We're so, we're off to a bad start. So you're gonna get you're gonna get three bombers. I was I was gonna die a little bit inside if I pulled out a bo- any amount of bombers, <laughs> but. Uh, no, it was 26 elite barbarians. Okay. Which I can get to level 11. 47 regular barbarians. Mm, okay. Eight battle rams. Now that's a good card. Do you see a pattern here? It's three barbarian cards in a row. So the next one's going to be a barbarian hut, and then you're going to unlock the barbarian launcher. Oh no, oh my goodness. You ready? Last card. Ready. One executioner. Okay. Well, that executioner is just there to kill all of the barbarians, so that's fine. That's it. Yep. And the night witches. Correct. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. So you're you're good. I'm good. That's it. All right. Now I've got a big dog. I'm ready. What kind of big dog? I have a legendary arena. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Magical I see what you did there. Chest. <laughs> that was you're you're on the edge of my seat there. Yeah. Yeah, it's a magical chest, but it's it's from the legendary arena. All right. All right, here we go. Seven cards. 861 gold. Okay. One. Harada. It's going to be a good it's going to be a good chest. It's going to be a good chest. You start off with a yeah. hog rider, you're going to you're starting off good. Especially just one. It's going to be a that, good chest. That's right. That's right. It's like <laughs> it's like providing someone with with like 35 roses which is clearly uh-huh. too much or just walking up to their like their front door with just like a single stem rose it's just, like, way better just yeah. handing it to, it's much more impactful so much more meaning all right so let's see what the next card is all right so maybe it's not such a good t- <laughs> <Maybe it's> not- <laughs> great two two barbarian huts <laughs> Ugh. They're not too bad i guess four musketeers five fireballs Okay. 12 heal spells. All right. I mean, we don't know how to play it, but all right. But all right. 95 knights. Ooh. And four goblin barrels. Nice. So that wasn't too bad. Wasn't the most. No. I thought the hog rider was going to get me something good there, but it was like a decent chest. The problem is, is we talked about it too much. That's right. We amped it up too much. But the 95 knights was super good because the mortar mauler baby uses the knight and it's a very very important card in the deck that's very helpful actually so i have my big dog and it is a magical chest as well from the legendary arena boom boom ready yep here we go 861 gold it sounds oddly close to the number i got it is close i think um, and there are seven cards. Okay. Fourteen stabby goblins. Stabby goblins. 
28 skeletons. Le doot. Now I only need 23 more skeletons for level 12. That's right. 51 royal giants. Royal GG. 11 furnaces. Blech. Blech. I mean, that's decent, I think. I don't know. I just, I don't know. I just, I think if there's really a card that I just dislike greatly, it's the furnace. It's just that noise when it hits the ground. It's like, <laughs> I can't handle it. I can't handle it. You know, it's funny. You know, it's like, you know what it, I'm talking about. It's funny that you didn't make any, you didn't even remotely come close to the sound it makes, yet I totally understood what you did. When they come out of the, the thing. Sure. That's it. You, you listen to it. You tell me that that's not the noise that they make. I think the more important part of what we're doing here is that I understood it. So it's fine. Boom. That's true. Right. All right. Cool. Here we go. Last cards. Ready? Ready. 14 heal spells. What's with these heal spells? Like, we never get heal spells. Now we talk about it on one episode and we get yeah, 30 of that's them. That's what happens. Where are my legendaries at? Where are my legendaries Where at? My legendaries? Where are my legendaries if at? If we just say it three times <laughs> yeah. and then click the button, then you'll get it's like, one. It's like Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. Here we go. You ready? Ready. Four rage spells. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Is this going to happen right now? Wait. Is this going to happen right Dude, now? Dude, if you get a sparky, <laughs> I'm going to jump out of my chair. Uh, you, have, you have another card. Don't jinx it. Of course I have another card, but don't jinx it. Are you ready? I don't know. The Electro Wizard! Boom! Boom! Boom. So wait, is that a level 2 Electro Wizard for you now? That is a level 2 Electro Wizard for me now, and that's five legendaries in one week. I envy you so much. Why does this keep happening? They must have heard me complain about it for 40 episodes. And they also must have heard the fact that you didn't get the Night Witch, and then I got it, and that's why they're not giving me anything anymore. I can't believe that that just happened. I am very happy. I, I truly envy what is going on right now. Five, five legendaries in one week, and I can't get one legendary past the challenge that I won in two months. It's amazing, though, regardless of how many I've gotten outside of the show, it's amazing how many times we are able to pull off pulling one out of a chest on the show. That's a very good point. It is a good point, but I'm still waiting for worlds to collide and have both of us pull a legendary on the same show. I'm telling you, the, the, the podcast itself would just completely implode. It really couldn't handle it. I don't think iTunes could handle the amount of energy coming from the stream. I don't think I can handle it. I can barely handle when one of us gets it. I mean, I would probably just fall over. <laughs> just fall over. I would do the remainder of the cast from the floor. I would record this podcast on the floor. Well, if it meant you getting and I getting a legendary... It's worth it. It's worth it. I'd say it's worth it, yeah. Slightly lower quality, I would imagine, but definitely worth it. Lower. Get it? Like, on the floor lower? Boom. <laughs> that was yeah, good. <laughs> that, was a, that, was a, that was a dad joke if I've ever heard one. Dad joke. Um, so that was a really good chest opening. I can't believe that that just happened. Um, let's move on to our deck spotlight. Deck spotlight. We have a phenomenal deck for you that includes the card that we've been talking about the entire episode. So the deck is lovingly called Nighty Night. And it is a 4.3 average elixir cost deck. And you guessed it. It includes the Night Witch, the Elixir Collector, the Golem, the Lightning, Baby Dragon, Skeletons, the Log, and Minions. So, Joe, since you are the only one out of the two of us that has the ability to play with the Night Witch, do you want to give us a rundown on how this deck actually works? I would love nothing more than to share this deck. If, if you guys have the Night Witch, this deck is tremendous. I highly recommend creating this deck, giving it a try, and seeing how it works. Because it is a typical Golem Beatdown deck. Ooh, hence the name Nighty Night, because you will knock your opponents right out. That's right. So, I mean, it's got the Night Witch, and your opponent is going to sleep. They are TKO'd for the rest of the match. The difference with this deck, it has the regular minions, so it's not as prone to lightning, right? Okay. The old deck had Electro Wizard, had Mega Minion, and had the Baby Dragon, and that got eaten alive by a lightning combination. Valid point. So this one removes that, so it's a little less lightning prone. 
The thing with this deck is that you have to be willing to take damage. Not too much damage, but enough. You'll find that finding the right balance between what, what too much is versus what's, what's not enough will come in the form of losses in the very beginning. Because you won't really know what to do. And right. ultimately, you're going to try and protect your towers too much and not have enough elixir to, to generate a push. Or you won't defend at all and you'll lose before you can win the game. So finding the, the right balance between how much damage you can take is going to be key. Now that said, this deck can take a lot of damage. It can take a punishing amount of damage and yet still let you win the game. It is a 4.3 elixir cost deck, so it's not cheap by any stretch of the imagination, which means that the only way that you can effectively get your push down and do what you need to do is if you can get a pump up and running in the back. The approach with this deck is very simple. If you have a pump in the beginning of the game, put it down in the back. If you don't have it, you need to cycle your cards as cheaply as you can while defending so that you can cycle to the pump while not spending lots of elixir and, oh by the way, not taking a lot of damage on your tower. At the end of the day, you don't have to defend every push that your opponent does. If it's not threatening enough to kill your tower, you might want to just spend a small amount of elixir, take a lot of damage, but just kill the thing that's there. As long as you have a pump going, one pump going, you can effectively destroy your opponent. You can go from being one tower down to three crowning your opponent within literally one minute. Once you have your pump down and it's, and it's, and it's pumping and you, and you have no worries that it's going to be taken out, you drop your golem in the back. Once you do that, your opponent's probably going to do something to try and punish you. Don't worry about it. Spend small amounts of elixir to just prevent it from getting to your king tower. But even mm -hmm. if they take your one tower, chances are you're going to make a bigger push than they are on the other side. After you drop the golem, defend small, and then drop the night witch behind the golem in the back. You don't want to drop her right behind the golem because you want her to generate more and more bats. So you want to drop her pretty far back behind the tower. So where would the golem have to be in order for you to drop the night witch behind the tower? So from your perspective, the golem is going to be above your right hand archer tower, right? Okay. So slightly above it. And you can drop your, your night witch behind the king tower on the right hand side so that the bats plus the night witch are, are trolling down the lane. Mm -hmm. Now here's the cool thing. The night witch is kind of slow, but she's faster than the golem. So she's going to catch up to it while generating bats. The bats are very annoying little things to deal with, but they have to be dealt with, otherwise your opponent's going to lose the game. Once you have the Night Witch behind the, the Golem, don't react too quickly. From here, you want to wait. Your options are going to be simple. Drop the Baby Dragon down, or drop the Log down, or drop the Lightning down. It's going to be one of those three things. You do not want to use your Skeletons or your minions too soon. Because if you do, they're going to get caught up in the answer that your opponent has for your normal bats. You okay. want to wait to use those cards until your opponent drops a log, then you drop your skellies, or mm -hmm. your opponent drops their arrows or their fireball, or you know their baby dragon goes down, or their zap. That way you can then safely drop your minions. If they don't use any of those, you are very simply using either your baby dragon or your lightning. If your opponent drops things that are squishy, that you don't want to drop a heavy lightning on, then you drop your baby dragon. It's simple to do, and it creates a lot more threat on the board that your opponent has to deal with. However, if they're dropping things down to deal with your push, like the Electro Wizard, or the Executioner, or single, single target troops that have you know, a pretty good amount of health, mm -hmm. drop the lightning down and just destroy them. If your opponent's plopping down an inferno tower or any other building in the middle to draw your golem in plop the lightning down clear the path get to the tower and end the game because i guarantee you if your opponent tries to defend this push and they cannot effectively defend it they also cannot effectively defend the continuing push which is why you will get the three crown before they can effectively defend what's going on Ugh. they will take your first tower <laughs> because don't forget man once you effectively go through the first push you have your Night Witch again. Right. Imagine having two of those bad boys behind a tank. Bad girls. Bad girls.
<laughs> bad, bad girls. That's right. I got to use to saying that. This deck is very good, but it is very, very hard to use. And the reason why it's hard to use is not because it requires a lot of skill. It's not because it's, there's a high skill cap. It's simply because it's difficult to tell when and when you can't take damage. Mm-hmm. You're going to try this deck at first, and you're not going to be able to balance the damage on your tower. But when you get it, when you see what you should and should not defend against, and you, you, you balance it appropriately, you're going to have fun with this deck. Now, here's one mistake that I will tell you I made inherently so many times while playing this deck that, that, that you should just watch out for. Okay. I tried to make it very clear before that all you need is one single pump in order to ensure that you have enough elixir to do what you need to do, right? Right. One of the biggest mistakes you can do is try to get too many pumps down. Because if you're only generating elixir, you're not developing a push. If you continuously put pumps down, it means that you're not playing the golem. That is the only way that you're going to win this game, is if you play the golem. So don't try and pump cycle, because that's not what this deck is for. There will be times where you can have two down, but those cases are rare, and are probably happening in double elixir time, when you're potentially going into overtime. Right. Otherwise, all you need is one solid pump that stays alive for you to make an amazingly difficult push for your opponent to deal with. Boom. Boom. So that's it, man. This deck is super good. It's used in challenges. It's used in tournaments. It's used in the ladder if you have enough trophy, if you have enough you know, card levels to do it. But it is super good, and I highly, highly, highly recommend it. Yeah, this thing seems crazy, and I'm very, very jealous that I'm not able to play it yet. Hopefully one day, I only have one more legendary to get. Well, technically, you only have one more card left to get, which is the Night Witch until the bats come out. So, you'll get it. Well, that's, you'll get it. that's a valid point. With the current role that you have with, with five legendaries in one week, I'm, yeah, chances are you'll probably get it tomorrow. <laughs> Fingers crossed. I Fingers hope so. Fingers crossed. Mm-hmm. So, that pretty much does it. That was a pretty good deck spotlight. Boom. Mm hmm. Uh, we had no patrons this week uh, or PayPal sponsorships this week. Uh, if you would like to uh, support the show uh, monthly, you can go to our website and you can learn all about uh, what we do, why we do it and why we need your help. Um, and there's a link in the show notes to either become a patron or to sponsor a tournament. And if you do sponsor a tournament because you don't want to commit to a monthly payment, we will run a tournament in your name which is always pretty cool. We actually just did that for uh, Cameron, right? We ran a pretty big tournament. That's right. Cameron did just sponsor a tournament. We hosted it for him. 200 people filled within 35 minutes or something like that. It was crazy. Everybody had a great time. So Cameron, thank you again for sponsoring that most previous tournament that we hosted. And boom. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, And also in the show notes, I'm sure you guys have noticed that uh, we are now Amazon affiliates. So what this means is if you click the link, it will bring you to a version of Amazon that kind of has, let's say, us in the background. And you do your regular everyday shopping on Amazon. And then when you make your purchase, a portion of your purchase um, goes directly towards helping our show. And you don't have to spend any extra money. You do your normal, regular shopping. So. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, that's right. It's a great way for people who want to support the show but don't want to do any monthly commitments. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's all we got. So uh, if you would like to join our clan, we refresh every Saturday night into Sunday. Uh, look for an open spot and make sure you write the word podcast in your invitation so we know that you came from here. Um, if you would like to send us feedback, you can send the feedback to feedback at castroyalpodcast.com. And as always, if you'd like to reach out to us on Twitter, you can do so by using the handle at Podcast Royale. Mm-hmm. And if you would like to leave us an iTunes review, it is the number one way you can help us reach more people. We will rise up in the ranks with a good, glowing review. Leave us feedback on there as well. And last but not least, If you ever want to talk to us or anybody else in our community, we do have our Discord running strong. We have our schedule on there if you want to see when the next podcast is coming out. Mm -hmm. We host at least weekly tournaments for the Discord members. It's a fun place to be when there are spots open in the Cast Royale clans. We are mentioning it there first. So be sure to check out castroyalepodcast.com slash Discord. It will give you a button to click and take you right into our Discord. 
be sure to join for all of the latest information, to hang out with us, and to be a part of the community there. Boom. Boom. And that, sir, is how you finish an episode. Episode 3-9 in the books. Mm-hmm. So, if there's nothing else, we will see you next time for another hodgepodge of everything! Hodgepodge of everything! Boom! Bye. Bye.